I come from there, but someone would be curious to, to know how comes that your names don't, you know, you have different names contrary to what everyone always have. Yeah. Uh, for me, naming yourself properly is part of our Africanness. A name must identify you with your land, language, history, and culture. Land, language, history, and culture. If I say to you, my name is Zhao Ping or Chao Teo Ting, you say, oh, he's from China. If I say my name is McDonald, you say, oh, he's from Scotland. You know, if I say my name is Ryan, you say he's from Ireland. So now if I say my name is Semo Gerere, you say, that, that's a name from Buganda. Uh, if I say my name is Kumalu, you should say that's from South Africa. But now imagine if you met a Chinese and if you asked him and say, oh, what is your name? And he said, my name is Nyerere. You would say there's something wrong with that Chinese, you know. You know uh, and if you met a, a Scottish man, you know, with a long nose, and you know, and you asked him and said, "What's your name?" And instead of saying, "Okay, my name is Mark Ritchie," oh, he says, "My my name is uh, uh, is is, Ka, is Kamau." You'd say, "Now, how funny do you think it looks for a black person?" you know, big African nose, melanated skin, you know, to say, my name is Cynthia. Some of these names are even funny, like John. John in English means toilet. You know? If you want to go to the toilet, you say, I'm going to the Johns. <laughs> now, uh, Peter. Peter means penis. Or to weaken. Now imagine you have a son-in-law and he's coming and say, oh, you know, penis has come. <laughs> so, <All> so... Right. <laughs> So you must name yourself properly. So my name Kirankuba means one who handcuffs lightning. You know? So as a child, I didn't even want to use the name. I thought it was so strong. But after the time I said, you know, yeah, Kirankuba, if you're coming to see me, you know, you're going to see a man who handcuffs lightning and throws thunder in jail. So I'm so good, I make medicine sick. <laughs> wow. That someone who makes medicine sick interesting <laughs> uh okay so uh we this week is an hrf uh week means the african food system week where we gathering to discuss about you know the food that we all have to live by eating because yes. without food probably there's no humanity mm -hmm. unless otherwise and in that regard we're also interested in the youth aspect how are youth involved into agriculture also is an extension of agribusiness. And I was just asking you briefly about, you know, what you do. And the things you own now, they are so much aspirational to so many people. But I know you've worked so hard to be there. For the youth who think that agriculture is not really a place to find hope and find life in th and thrive with it, how do you, you know, bring us in the context of where Africa was and what was the law of, let's say, young people, in, you know, getting involved into agriculture? And the today's world, where it's more to do with, you know, look for the white collar jobs, good, spend some good time on social media, then go in a hotel and ask for, you know, for delivery or order for delivery on what on on, on online. What do you think about the law of use into uh, food security in, in in Africa and in agriculture as a, as a whole? Let me tell you that I employ 600 people in Uganda alone. 600 people. I think the lowest paid in Uganda is like 600,000. The highest paid in dollars is uh, $6,000. Um, in South Africa, now we are about 480. We employ about 480. All, all, all the companies I run report to Kampala. When I grew up, uh, people used to say, we report to London, we report to, no, no. For us, we report to Kampala. You know, and, 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 and we say, Kampala lakuta, cosa finita. Kampala has spoken, case closed. So, I have a farm in Uganda. I have a cattle ranch, six square miles. I have about 800 cows half cows these 800 cows in a year they produce about 600 cows now a cow 
is about uh, six uh, about uh, six hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars. So you can calculate and see how much money getting cows alone, and the cows pretty much feed themselves. In South Africa, an Angola cow. I just bought a cow with the president of South Africa. Bought one cow, and it was over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. One bull. In an Angola cow in South Africa is is a lot of money. It's, you can buy it for two hundred thousand dollars. An Angola cow. Now, you see, everywhere there are rich people. The rich people own land. Land is the basis of independence, freedom, righteousness, justice, everything. If you don't have land, that's why you see, rich people have ranches. And what is on ranches? Cows and land. A, a, a ranch is over five square miles. So, what happened in South Africa is interesting because in South Africa, the white people who came, they called themselves Africans. They said they were the real Africans, Africans. Then they called the African people Bantu. Now, the South African black people are not really interested in land. Yeah? They don't want farmland. In South Africa, if you want to impress somebody, you buy a car. And I was telling a sister outside that they call it our car. My, mine and the banks, me and the banks car. Uh, but we should look at a time when a woman asks you and says, okay, instead of saying, where's your car? Or how much money do you have? They should say, where's your cow? How many cows do you have? Where's your land title? You know, you know they, a woman should first, in, in, in Angkore, and I'm sure where you come from, it was a practice that before you fall in love with a man, you have to go and see what they have in their home. You went and asked. There, there was a group of people from your family that went to inspect what the man has. Does he have cows? Do they have potato fields? Do they have grain? Do they have all these things? So the I love you marriage is a Western invention. We never married somebody because you love him. You love me, why? My mother doesn't even love me. Now you come and say, you, call, you start calling me baby when I'm an adult. Yeah? Yeah? Good morning, baby. I'm an adult with a beard, and you call me baby. Eh? <laughs> sweet, sweet. They call me sweetie and all this. This, the real thing you should ask of a man is how much land do you have? Do you have enough wealth? That's where we got the concept of bride wealth. Among the Batoro, you went to your father-in-law and say, I come as a supplicant to this home to take your pain and make it mine, to be a servant if I must, if only you allow me to have the hand of your daughter in marriage. I have created this wealth alone. Then you showed it. Now, that concept of wealth has disappeared. People just meet in the street and they love a man because he has a nose or he has legs. Who doesn't have legs? <laughs> you know, even a cripple has got uh, still legs. How can you love somebody because their legs are, 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 are long? <laughs> what if they have an accident and they become short? No, <laughs> what happens? You know. So, when you talk about the youth and what we need to do, we need to, you know, that's why I was saying that most of what we learn is propaganda. It is propaganda. You see something over time, it becomes your second nature. You begin to think, like, uh, if, if you have two tickets to give to a Tanzanian, the first thing they say, we want to go to Paris, the ISO Tower. It's some steel structure in the street. Why, why do you want to go and see it? Yeah? You haven't even visited the whole of Tanzania. Yeah? And you want to go and see the ISO Tower. And you want perfume. Perfume, do you smell so much that somebody should, should pump you with perfume? Yeah? So all the things that were crucial to us meant something. Me, my father said to me, if I live, my, I was born in a mining family. My father was a miner. They were artisanal miners. Okay. But they had a concept for gold. Don't sell, don't tear, don't abandon. Don't sell, don't, don't sell. tear, don't abandon. My father left me with 13 kilograms of gold. 13. Do you still have gold? I can't tell you. <laughs> don't tell. <laughs> don't tell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but... He said to me, if I leave you 13 kilograms of gold, 
you must multiply it a hundred times. If I leave you a small house, you must build a hundred times bigger. If I leave you on one acre, you must have a hundred acres. We must demand the impossible out of our children. I really believe that we parents have spoiled our children. We have even become chauffeurs to our children. You drive a child to school. Yeah? Now you are a chauffeur and the child sits at the back and says, Daddy, you know, just stop there. I want to buy a book. You know? <laughs> and you stop. Yeah? We must demand the impossible. We must say targets you know, for our children. Not to praise them. Me, I never had my father say, I love you. I couldn't even ask him, Daddy, do you love me? He would say, I'm crazy. You know, whose house do you sleep in? You know, whose food are you eating? So, what has happened to us is we have got lost in the white wilderness. What other people, other cultures adopt as their way of expressing love is what we have taken on. And that has killed the whole system that was built over 1,000 years. That's why I insist on us knowing where we came from and how long and that we, 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 the processes of socialization, we developed it here. We have the total sum of human collective experience. That is why your mother, you could be here. I don't know whether your mother is still alive. Is your mother still alive? Yes, for, uh, fortunately. You yes. could be seated here and, uh, and, and, and a leaf comes and falls on your mother's lap and she says there's something wrong with my son. We call this a corresponding cosmic connection. Let me tell you something. There's nothing more beautiful than being black. Tell me. because And there's nothing more beautiful than being a black woman. There's nothing. You, you have no idea. You know, I see a lot of, of people bleaching. Black people bleaching their skin and whatever. This black skin pigmentation, you know, we call it melanin. It's produced by an enzyme called melatonin. For melatonin to produce melanin, it needs a catalyst enzyme we call tyrosinase 7. If you have no tyrosinase 7, you can't have black skin. But melanin is responsible for a lot of things, how you walk, how you talk, how you welcome people. Melanin also controls aging. It controls fatigue. It controls sleeping cycle. Companies are investing in melatonin. So you already have it. You already, you have more. You are given the biggest gift of blackness to start with. And if you decided to be a trader, there'd be no trader better than you. If you try, decided to be a pilot or to be a scientist, to be an innovator, because there is nothing new under the sun. We have done all this before. I met a sister who is in Egypt. If you go, go to, go to Egypt, go to Saqqara, go to Kumombo, go to the, to the sacred temple of Seti the First. We did this before. Technology is in us. That's why you can be going to Kabari. Your car breaks down. This, we had this incident. Mm -hmm. Four professors in a car. Mm -hmm. We reach Rakai. The car breaks down. We leave the car to walk to look for a mechanic. But the mechanic never went to school. So he was wearing sandals and smoking. And he came and said, you know, let, let me listen to the engine. He says, I know what's the problem. The man, four professors. They couldn't even solve a problem. <laughs> Technology is built in us. Then uh, I, I, I just I'm curious. Then with that richness that Africa, you know, has in history, but also, you know, based on what we have here, yes, endowed with, yes. Why is it that still we're still going, let's say, to Russia to cry, hey, can you give us more food? Yes, we're going where? Yet we have a young generation. Yes, we have. We are almost croaking to. Poor. We are more than one billion. I understand. Yes, Africa. Yes. How is it that we cannot feed ourselves? What's wrong with us? Well, it's not what's wrong with us. It is what right are we not exercising? You see, Africa is divided between those who think that they are educated, that they know. These are the people who get privileges. But who are those? Those are the people that have studied European propaganda. We call it education, but it is propaganda. It's like when I went to school, uh, in the primary school, they said science. And the science, they would say, uh, draw a tree. So you'd say, you draw a tree and say leaves, a branch. But I already knew this. Before I went to school, I already knew that a tree has branches, it has a top root. It, you know, I knew these things. But just by putting it in English, what they call education is mainly English. It's, that's, that's what they call. They reward a person by speaking English. A person becomes an MP a member of parliament, 